Sometimes video games can be challenging or have secrets that a first time player would never know. And while nowadays there are countless guides and videos online for every video game you could ever want to play that will tell you the best way to get through them and tell you all the secrets you could possibly want to know for free, I'd like to take you back to when one of the primary ways to obtain information was through physical official strategy guides, which you actually had to pay for. Specifically, strategy guides made by Brady Games. Brady Games, who, at least by number of guides released, was the number two strategy guide company behind Prima Games. And on June 1st, 2015, they would lose their competition with Prima Games and be bought out by them. Three weeks later, Brady Games' last strategy guide was released. And when a company is in its last days, there are generally three mindsets that will take place as far as the quality of the products it's putting out. One, keep business as usual and maintain their usual standards. Two, hey, if we're going out, we might as well try and go out proud by doing our best work. Or option three, well, we're going out of business, so might as well put out some garbage, which is what the strategy guide for Batman Arkham Knight is. And speaking of releasing garbage, I feel like I could have come up with a better segue, but on that note, this video took a decent amount of time and effort to film and edit, and if you end up enjoying it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Finally, we are here for Arkham Knight, but I follow the official strategy guide. The guide pretty early on pretty much says, hey, if you play the previous Arkham games and have experience, you should play the game on hard, which we are going to do. Now, the main story playthrough had two major obstacles created by the guide. First off, Batman has a lot of gadgets, which in turn have a lot of upgrades. Unfortunately, the guide provides no example upgrade path and very rarely actually bothered to suggest a specific upgrade. And I have a general rule with these strategy guide playthroughs that just telling you broadly to get whatever upgrade you feel like with no direction is not good enough for something that was at one point sold on the promise of guiding you through the game, making this pretty much a no upgrade playthrough, which on hard difficulty did occasionally come with some problems. Holy shit. Guns kill you really fast on hard mode with no upgrades. God damn yeah, so we... <laughs> yeah, no armor, hard difficulty. Our time of death is quite short. The best part of this was that in the early part of the game, the guide advises us to do the five AR missions that pop up when you get the new bat suit in order to acquire upgrade tokens. Even though we weren't going to use those on anything. Okay, hold on. When exactly does it instruct us to do these AR challenges? Because there are hostages in there, and I think it tells us to do the AR challenges before we rescue the hostages. Technically speaking, it does instruct us to do the AR challenges before taking out the three thugs. Okay. Let's get started. This is going to take a minute. Okay. Alright, well, those were very, you know, those taught me a lot. Alright, <laughs> now let's finally take these guys out and rescue the hostages. The second major obstacle for the guide is a lack of detail about enemies. The guide fails to mention the glowing weak points on the drones that can be shot with the machine gun until the point where the game directly tells you about it. It also only mentions this for the base drones and the diamondbacks and doesn't make any mention of the fact that you can do this for most of the other drones and only really recommends us to use the heavy cannon against them. And I'd like to point out, this is not just in the story. There's also a pre-section of the guide pre prior to the main story section that goes over, well, goes over is a strong word, but does briefly mention the Rattler drones as well and all the other drones, and it also doesn't have it in there. It's not just the drones that the guide is lacking information about, but also the basic enemies, as the ninja soldiers, who are... One of the more annoying basic enemies in the game are not even acknowledged. Where are you guys? Anything about you guys? Because last the Arkham City had some interesting advice for you guys.
No, never mind. No <laughs> direct mention to the combat ninjas. All right. Oh, hold on. The walkthrough has finally referred to the fact that the Rattlers can be taken out instantly with a direct shot at the sensory array with the Vulcan gun. Could have mentioned that just in the beginning. Made it easier for me, but you know. You got there eventually. Now, the guide only mentioned that for the Rattler and for the Rattlers, so we are still going to have to use the heavy cannon only for the Mambas. Even though we can just hit the red glowing bit and blow them up. This is a similar pattern appears with the Cobra drone, where it only mentions sneaking up behind it and taking it out with the heavy drone, and not mentioning the fact that you can use the missile barrage to take them out much quicker and from a large, from farther away. It does eventually mention that, but uh, well, you'll see where it mentions it. It's pretty past the point where it should have been mentioned. Now, eventually, the guide does make a hint here or there to us actually getting an upgrade, but they're few and far between. Okay, so the only significant thing I'm seeing in the entirety of the Panessa Studios section of the guide is that it, the guide outright says eliminate three to five guys right away with a fear multi takedown. It makes multiple assertions to us having assumptions that we have the up to five fear multi takedown upgrade. So, yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, first upgrade. This feels like a good time to start talking about how this guide handles spoilers throughout the game. Now, most strategy guides don't really care about not spoiling you throughout the game, generally only making an effort to stop telling you what's happening in the story after the final gameplay section and right before the final cutscene of the game. This guide, however, goes quite far out in order to not spoil you, as at no point does the guide mention the existence of the Joker being in this game through hallucinations, Uh, as a matter of fact, the guide actually does miss you. The guide also at no point acknowledges that the Arkham Knight is Jason Todd, although it does switch to referring to him as the Red Hood during his boss fight. The guide also doesn't spoil you on Barbara's death. However, it doesn't bother to cover up her return and the fact that that death was a fake. This guide did not acknowledge Barbara's fake death. However, Protect Oracle is very... Take Oracle to GCPD, meet with Oracle, Oracle is all over this page. The guide made sure to not spoil you to the fact that Barbara died, but not, felt no need to cover up the fact that her death was fake and her return. And I know I'm going on and on about Oracle, but there are essentially like three major spoilers in this game. One, Joker is in it and appears throughout the game through hallucinations. Two, the Red Hood is Jason Todd. And three, that Barbara dies and then is eventually revealed to not be dead. Joker, you find about out of well, Joker, you find out about in the first hour of the game. And Jason Todd is obvious. Like the only people who didn't know or didn't fully expect the Arkham Knight to be Jason Todd is the people who bought into Rocksteady blatantly lying about him being an original character. So essentially, the only like actual major spoiler that like like i said isn't in the first hour or isn't frankly obvious is the fact that barbara's death was fake which is like the one thing the guide fails at keeping from spoiling you the story mode does not acknowledge the existence of joker in its entirety you might be wondering how the fuck does the guide talk about the remaining part of the game without acknowledging the existence of Joker. <laughs> As Batman emerges from the rear he find, of the truck, he finds himself in Crime Alley behind the Monarch Theater. Climb onto the dumpster and hop over the fence and attempt to open the theater door. Pay your respects to the man and woman who lie on the ground. Wonder who that could be. The vigilantes, past demons, are getting the better of him. They climb over the fence and begin to attack. With no utility belt and gadgets, use counters and strikes to knock them out. Takedowns can be performed when available. When prompted, rapidly tap the strike button to finish them off. 
when you regain control, jump into the Batmobile. When you regain control, actually after you lose control, jump into the Batmobile and take out the soldiers that surround the room. Hop out and enter the door on the right. Follow the corridor around its twisted turns, taking down any enemy that stands in the way. Activate the flashlight after the lights go out and make your way down the hallway. Destroy the chairs that block the path to the left and continue onwards. When the room appears to trap you inside, wait a short while and another door appears. Obliterate the statues that show up and when light appears from a weakened wall, destroy the plaster. Follow the walkway to the other room and throw the switch labeled exit. When the foe comes at Batman, counter and strike until you can finish him off with an environmental takedown. An ending cinematic follows. But yes, Joker, the, the, to sort of recap, the acknowledgement of Joker, like, I understand, like, maybe, like, having a spoiler warning or, like, holding off the initial surprise, but the fact that he is literally never addressed, because it, I feel it should be brought up that he has extra dialogue throughout the game and all of the side missions, and it's legitimately worthwhile to make sure you do every side mission in the game while you still have him around to hear all of his lines. And that's just not brought up. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Despite the initial challenges that came with no upgrades and not using certain strategies against the vehicles, the main story was kind of uneventful, except for a few of the boss fights. Now, the Excavator boss fight has something that annoys me a lot in strategy guides. You see, it's very common for guides to direct you using north, south, east, and west, even in games with no built-in compasses. And usually what the guide expects you to do is just imagine if there was a compass on your mini-map, or just the map in general, in the standard orientation, a compass is usually on a map. However, the Batmobile has an in-game compass, and the guide does use north, east, and south to direct your movement in this boss fight. But does it go off the in-game compass or off the imaginary compass that doesn't exist on your mini-map, but you can pretend it does? In the east tunnel? Uh, to give you a hint, if you go off the in-game compass, east has no tunnels, and you would just drive straight into a wall. The assault on GCBD was also difficult for multiple reasons, one of which being that the guy apparently didn't know you can just call the Batmobile in this part and just run over everybody. God damn it. Do you know how much easier this could be if I just if you just let me use the Batmobile? Nope. Just back. Let's go. Alright, it can get it can get pretty overwhelming in front of GCBD. A back alley on the west side takes you around back with fewer drones to deal with. have to admit, this alley is working out pretty well.
That worked out well. Alright. Try and do a fear takedown off rip. Use the Oracle takedowns and focus the medics. GCPD. I need to stop them. Fear multi takedown. Please. Okay. Hold on. Can't wait to get down there and kill me some cops. You're hanging. Oh, I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to do a fear takedown here. Now, that pretty much covers everything from the main story, and now it was time to move on to the side missions. Now, for the most part, outside of the Militia side quest, there really isn't much to talk about. The Pig, Two-Face, Man-Bat, and Firefly side quest just went fine with no major problems or really anything to talk about. The Azriel side quest was notable only for the fact that it actually specifically directed us to get the Blade Dodge takedown. This thing has also mentioned the blade dodge takedown, so we're going to grab that. How do I... Oh yeah, so upon review as I edit this, uh, this section of the guide references the blade dodge, but never the actual takedown. So technically I shouldn't have gotten this upgrade too. Now we weren't advised to do any upgrades from the Gunrunner side mission, but two things did come out of it I want to talk about. Good work, Nightwing. The first thing being that the page that covers the story mission that unlocks this side mission is just copy and pasted into the side mission section, even though getting this far in the story is a requirement to access the side mission in the first place. The second thing I want to bring up about this mission is that it is the only time in the entire story mode and all of the side missions that the guide recommends using the explosive gel to actually take people out in a predator site. Which brings me to another one of the big problems this guide has, which is its failure to utilize some of Batman's better gadgets. The most egregious example of this is the fact that outside of the guide telling you to grab the freeze blast grenade from the start of the story through the all the side missions, the guide never once recommends or tells you to utilize the freeze blast grenade even once. And to really show how crazy that is, that includes the Riddler puzzles that require you to use the freeze blast grenade. However, we'll get more into how bad the Riddler section for this guide is later on in the video. And the thing with these gadgets never being brought up is it's not like the guide didn't have the opportunity to do so. Or even a situation where it should have. For you see, this guide provides a couple of sentences of advice and suggested strategies for every individual encounter for the line of duty, own the roads, occupy Gotham, and gunrunner side quest. Which all in all is over... 60 encounters and at no point in any of these is the freeze blast mentioned is the remote battering mentioned 
and only once is the explosive gel mentioned. And if you're wondering, the advice it provided was not always the best. These two are probably the most egregious examples of that. Okay. So, no mention of the fact that we can use the disruptor to jam these things if we upgrade it. What it wants us to do... This, okay, this is really stupid. For some reason, what this thing, let me just reiterate what this thing wants us to do. So. Alright. Blind one of the outside guns. Quickly move to the center turret. Throw down a smoke pellet and destroy it. Take out the functional one next before eliminating the third. Sneak up on the commander and perform a silent takedown. I... So first off, throwing down the smoke pellet alerts him. Okay, well, it did last time. Okay, well, it doesn't alert him, which just makes the smoke pellet completely pointless. Because the sentry guns aren't affected by the smoke pellet. So either A, depending on whether or not you throw the smoke pellet in a way that alerts this guy or not, he will turn around and shoot you when you move out of the smoke pellet to take out the other sentry gun. Or he won't notice the smoke pellet, in which case it's entirely pointless. Uh, drive the Batmobile around, destroying the automated weapons and knocking over the guards and Wait, over the guards inside? I can bring the Batmobile in here? Fuck yeah, let's fucking go. How the fuck do I do that? If we don't find something soon, it didn't say, and I thought the whole point of these barriers was I couldn't bring the Batmobile through this section. Okay. Did I misread that? There are a few ways to tackle this challenge. Drive the Batmobile around, destroying the automated weapons, and knock out the guys inside. Okay. Is there an angle which we can get in there? What? Okay. Assuming you're wrong about the fucking Batmobile, then what? No. You.
Holy shit. Probably would have been a lot easier if, you know, I had upgrades. The guide also was lacking in the campaign for disarmament side mission, which is the one where you have to blow up all the mines in the city, and every time you do so, you are attacked by a group of tanks. The way this one let me down is, as previously mentioned, other side missions had kind of like just info bites for every single encounter. This only has a single table, which doesn't mention number of enemies, strategies, how they start up a fight. Which, considering most of these fights essentially start off with you immediately being surrounded in a kind of ambushed fashion, it would have been helpful to have individualized sections for each mine. Are you shooting me right now? Okay, that's a fucking position. Okay, that's crazy. Taking damage. Batman taking out a rattler. Holy shit. All right. Hopefully that's the hardest one. I can use the power wave to trigger a controlled explosion. I appreciate you Bruce for saying the line. The Batmobile Ram Charge Upgrade is very useful here for the Armed and Dangerous one. This is the one where you run around doing the uh, vehicle chases. That That is a specific call to an upgrade. Ram Charge. Okay, no other upgrades. Boom. Let's go. After finishing up all the militia side missions, it was time for us to do the much loved Deathstroke boss fight. Well, Batman. Looks like you've been busy. This occupation's over, Slade. You're done. Alright, five Cobra drones join Deathstroke as they search for the Batmobile. Uh his tank looks very similar to the Cloudburst. As a 360-degree view. Field division, making it nearly impossible to catch off guard. Use the same strategy that you used against the Arkham Knight. Watch the radar and avoid the big tank while picking off the Cobra drones. Missile barrages are particularly useful against Cobra. Okay. That is the first time it has mentioned that Cobra drones can be destroyed by missile barrages. Allowing you to avoid the heavy tank's field division. Once the five Cobra tanks have been destroyed, change your focus to Deathstroke. Confront the boss from a safe different distance, reversing away from him and bombarding him with gunfire. No general, make sure your Batmobile is fully upgraded before facing him? Nope, that would have been nice. Okay. It did mention that missile barrages can be used to take out Cobra drones, which would have been nice to be brought up earlier. God, I wish that would have been mentioned earlier in any of the multiple sections where how to deal with Cobra drones was brought up. I have to admit, this, the just to reverse and don't stop firing at him strategy, working out quite well. Is that that's literally just Enigma? So there are 243 Riddler puzzles or Riddler trophies in this game. We're not going to go over all of them for obvious reasons. If that would be its own video, if I did that. But generally speaking, we're going to gloss over the destructible objects, um, the just environmental riddles scans, and the trophies that are just pretty much just lying on the ground across Gotham or behind walls. And mainly, we're going to focus on the ones that have actual puzzles and the entirety of what the guide provides on how to solve them.
And now to demonstrate the effectiveness of the guide's advice, I'm going to show you how you would normally solve the puzzle, or at least how my dumbass solved them. Then I'm going to show you the entirety of all advice provided by the guide for that particular puzzle. Starting with this fairly complicated one. It starts off requiring the voice synthesizer to open two doors. Then you use the airship's motion controls to send the box into two sentry guns, destroying them. From there, you reactivate the motion controls to send the box tumbling outside the airship. You then have to find out where the box landed, a place that makes no sense given where the box fell from and the trajectory at which it was falling from. And what directions did the guide provide for this puzzle? Trophy. Guarded by sentry guns. That's it. That's the only thing it said. Nothing. Literally nothing. Yeah, the advice for the Riddler puzzles are really bad. Like, if this was a free guide, like if this was the IGN guide, it would be laughable. But I remind you, this was sold for $25 in 2015 money. The Riddler Says puzzle is another really bad one, as the idea behind this puzzle is that you are shown a written word that spells out a color, but the word itself is a different color and then you have to hit buttons corresponding to the right color. Now, something I would like to make very clear, that this puzzle is not random. It is the same every time. Despite the fact that it is the same every time, rather than telling me what the correct sequence is, the guide just says, Riddler says puzzle. Now this puzzle was notable as it required me to get an upgrade for the disruptor. Sabotage that until I upgrade the disruptor. All right. So just to clarify, having beaten every mission in the main story, we are finally encountered a Riddler puzzle. Our first Riddler puzzle that requires us to get an upgrade. Our final tally for non-Riddler puzzle was 157 Wayne upgrade points. That's how many we accumulated using only the spending only on the gadgets that were mentioned before we ran into something that we had to get an upgrade for. I would also like to note that not only does the guide not tell you you need to get this upgrade for this puzzle, the guide in fact tells you nothing. And of course, don't forget the multiple Riddler puzzles that require the Freeze Blast, where the Freeze Blast is never mentioned. Because the Freeze Blast is never mentioned. At any point in this guide. Okay. Gun crate explosion reveals puzzle. Use the REC to power pipes. There was another fun bit showing how lazy the guide is on Stag's airship, where there are four puzzles based around monkeys mirroring your actions. Despite all these puzzles being slightly different, they all have the exact same non-helpful advice. Remote hacking device unlocks monkey puzzle. Now stop me if you've heard this before. Remote hacking device unlocks monkey puzzle. Ah. 
Tommy, if you've heard this one before, remote hacking device unlocks monkey puzzle. Remote hacking device unlocks monkey puzzle. These next two puzzles had just great advice to go alongside them. Nothing. Nothing. This was a great one where it told me that the puzzle was behind a weak, destructible wall. And then proceeded to provide no advice about how to actually deal with the puzzle. Puzzle behind a weak... What? So either it's literally just behind that wall or the guide to shit. Riddler robot puzzle. That's all we got for that one. And we'll end the Riddler puzzles with this one. I'm going to clarify. Make sure I'm not losing my mind. Yeah, there's no... no. The guy makes no note of that power surge. Yeah, so the entire point behind this puzzle is you're supposed to hook up to the power so that you can just spam the Batmobile abilities unlimited and just use the missile barrage. The fact that that power thing is there or that you're supposed to hook up to it is not mentioned by the guide. After getting every Riddler trophy I could get, I proceeded to start progressing Riddler's actual side quest to rescue Catwoman. Now, the guide got me through these with no major problem until the final exam. Now, this puzzle is a bit complicated, but to put it simply, there is a grid of Riddler pressure plates that can be moved by Batman using the REC gun on some generators. If Catwoman is standing on one, it will not move. There are some holes in the grid, 
and three phases where a laser or two is going to be pointed at the ground at different locations. The goal is for the laser to go into the holes in the grid. So the guide has a full page that at first I thought would get me through this puzzle with no problem, until I realized something was really stupid about this. You see, the guide uses a simple grid system similar to, say, Battleship to tell you what pressure plates to stand on and what generators to hit with the REC. The problem is that the in-game generator column is on the right. And rather than just going with that, or just having the guide have it on the left but keeping the grid setup standard, where this position would be A1, this one A5, E1 and E5, and so on, the guide makes the decision to flip the grid so that this is A1, A5, E1, and E5, and so on. So, unless, okay, is this thing being stupid? Oh my god, this thing's being so stupid. Why would it be, okay, I see why. I don't know why they decided to diagram it like this. But the way I'm looking, they've essentially mirrored it in the book, if it makes any sense. I'll, I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when I put it on screen, but they've mirrored it. So, Why does Eddie need the Catwoman power? on A1, which is this, and repel generator A. Catwoman on C2 to track with that out of the way we proceeded to punch Riddler not nearly enough times Not enough. He deserves more. Having now done everything covered by the guide, I quickly went over all the various upgrades I had acquired over the playthrough and made my way to the ending. Alright, so for the record, 176 spare Wayne upgrade points, and the only upgrades that pretty much the guide said anything that would lead us to reasonably believe that could be reasonably counted as inferring to a specific upgrade for us to get were the fear multi takedowns up to five. The app, the actually, no, so this wasn't even mentioned. These two weren't even mentioned. I just needed this. This was a requirement for a Riddler puzzle. I am assuming it was a requirement. So seven. <laughs> it's amazing how many few, how few upgrades you can do. And then because you have the knife takedown, was also that was the blade dodge takedown was mentioned twice but we technically didn't need either of these two to beat the game and then obviously the batmobile one's just the ram charge which we, we don't we could have gotten away with without getting so i think the only actual upgrade and well no there, so yeah you need the fear takedowns to level five to five just to uh because there's the riddler robot puzzles where you have to take them out in like two seconds that and then the disruptor to do the mine but you only need those four upgrades because you got to do the path to actually 100% the game. And with that, this video comes to an end. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. If you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, thanks for continuing to support the channel. I will be trying to regularly post Arkham-related videos every Monday, and I hope to see you in the next one.